Dominik Hajlik boste govorila v angliškem jeziku, zato bomo vsem naknadno poslali prevedene govore v eni od poštnih oblik. In končno je prišel trenutek, da lahko na oder povabim Aleksisa Ciprasa, podpredsednika stranke Evropske levice, njenega kandidata za predsednika Evropske komisije ter vodjo največje grške opozicijske stranke Sirize. Hello, comrades and friends. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm very happy that I'm seeing that Strujana Levica is here, strong. I'm very happy to see that left is here in Ljubljana, united and promising as never before in Slovenia. We march ahead. This is not only a new party. This is a political alliance for hope. This is an, an alliance for the people. And this alliance proves that the left exists to unite, not to divide people. And it cannot unite people if it does not unite itself. This is the meaning of Struzena Levica. And this is the same that we did in Greece with Syriza, the left radical coalition of the left. And our experience shows that when the left unites, it does not simply add forces, it multiplies forces and political impact. And I'm sure that will also happen in Slovenia, because your efforts springs not from party mechanisms who breed corruption, austerity, unemployment and poverty. This is the response of the social left to the old political establishment which is withering away in Slovenia, in Greece, in Europe. Next May, in less than 90 days, it will be in our hands to throw them in the history's waste paper basket. Dear comrades, next May, each and every citizen in each and every corner of this continent holds our common future into her hands. If they vote left, Europe will turn left. And then the Eurozone crisis could be resolved collectively, fairly, and credibly and we could pave the way for Europe's balanced and viable growth. We could set the basis for the Europe of employment and justice. We will reject the failed neoliberal recipe for the crisis because the Eurozone crisis is a crisis of the neoliberal paradigm. It appears so one way or another, they force the South to pay for the banking system of the entire Europe. And I think that this cannot go on. Enforcing bailout and bail-in solutions, or a combination of both, in a recipe for crisis contagion and overall destabilization, in Greece, which, in Greece, 
is a systemic, systemically important to the Eurozone cannot be testing ground for a combination of this kind. Nor could Slovenia be that. Looking at the Slovenia, the Slovenia is on the slippery downhill of Greece. At the end of the Cold War, had Europe been so divided and undemocratic? Never before since the end of the Cold War had Europeans be, been so suspicious of each other. Never before since the end of the Cold War had Europeans been so Eurosceptics. This is exactly what motivated my candidacy for the presidency of the European Commission on behalf of the European left. join forces in order to end austerity and regain democracy, to hold back the social processes that revive nationalist tendencies and xenophobia and inflame right-wing populism and extremism, to reunite people and countries that neoliberalism divides, to force the widest possible social and political alliance against austerity, to put forward the solidarity of young women and men, of the working people, of the pensioners and the unemployed in a Europe against the solidarity of the capital. <laughs> Our solidarity, the solidarity of the people, is the only solidarity that could break through the dichotomy north-south in Europe that could demolish the new wall of money between creditors and debtors that further divides the humanitarian crisis and about European integration. And the Europe of Mr. Juncker and Mr. Schulz is exactly the Europe we want to change. In place, In place of a Europe of fear, of unemployment and poverty, in the place of the current Europe that distributes income to the few and fear to the many, in place of a Europe in the service of bankers' needs, we want Europe in the service of human needs. Friends and friends, the European establishment has managed the crisis not in order to resolve it, but in order to rewrite Europe's post-war political economy. In order to trigger the avalanche of capital against labor. That's why Chancellor Merkel in Germany, along with a neoliberal bureaucratic elite in Brussels, treats social solidarity and human dignity as economic distortions and national sovereignty as a nuisance. That's why they are forcing Europe to wear the straight jacket of austerity, discipline and deregulation. Our own response is straightforward. The European Union will either be democratic or will not exist. And these days, it's proven once again that the greatest threat to democracy in Europe is the rise of fascism, of neo-Nazis. And let me say that the political developments in Ukraine should alarm each and every citizen in Europe. It is unacceptable and dangerous that the European political establishment tolerates the neo-Nazi right sector in positions of power in, in Ukraine.
it is unacceptable and danger and dangerous that the European political establishment tolerates a prime minister in Ukraine giving Nazi style salutes. <laughs> there are powerful there are powerful countries in the merger of risks into one uncontrolled entity. We want effective European legislation which taxes offshore economic and entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial activities. We support the collective, credible and definite resolution of the Eurozone debt crisis through a European debt conference predicated on the 1953 London Conference for Germany's debt. We try to find a viable solution for Europe. And we believe that we have been vindicated for our criticism to the neoliberal policies in Europe. And we are the only one alternative for Europe. In Europe, there are three families. The one is the family of the European Popular Party and the Social Democrats that became more and more, day by day, more conservative, more neoliberal. They don't propose something different for Europe. They believe and they say to us that it's left. We don't want to smash the European framework. We want to change the European framework. We want to reconstruct Europe for people's needs. And we believe, we believe that this alternative is a realistic one. So, dear comrades and friends, in the May election, the European establishment, I think that, and I believe that, will hear our loud voice. What was the word that you said last year? Gotovsi. Is it right? <laughs> so, Gotovsi. That means you are finished. Of, of Greece, the people and Syriza together will march into the long, difficult, but full. But it will be a hope of change for all European people. Dear comrades and friends, neoliberalism is neither a natural phenomenon, phenomenon nor is it invisible. We are confident that the European left will be the positive surprise of the May election. We are confident that you, Struz and Alevica, the united left in Slovenia, will be the positive surprise of next May elections in Slovenia. <laughs> and I want you to know, Benian will be in the European Parliament elected by your voters. I'm sure that we have a very important opportunity, a very big chance in these elections to change Europe, to change the balances, and to create a very a, a, a big hope for everybody in Europe, for the people of Europe, to create a new future of Europe, and I believe that this May will be the May of the European left, will be the May of hope and change in Europe, will be the May of European citizens, 